Hey guys, Anthony here from Crazy Tech Lab and today we are going to be doing a really quick video to show you how to install one of these, a, a brand new Ryzen 7000 series CPU and we are going to be installing this one which is a Ryzen 9 7950X, the brand new 16 core. We're going to be installing that into this gorgeous motherboard here which is the ASRock x670e tai chi so the reason why i'm doing this video is uh, because i've had a few comments about uh, the new socket with amd and obviously you're dealing with pins in the processor socket like an intel socket rather than on the back of the cpu so we've got no pins on the back here, as you can see, they're just uh, gold plated pads and these will rest on top of the pins in the actual processor socket. So what we need to do is to basically get this in there without damaging the pins and that's a really important comment because the pins are incredibly easy to damage. So for example, if you hold the CPU up like that, drop it into the socket, you're going to kill your motherboard because you would have bent the pins and that's something that Intel users will be very familiar with and may have even damaged motherboards themselves. So what we want to try and do is to avoid that as much as possible. So to start with then, what we will do is leave that cap in place. This black cap here is removable, but do not remove it at all. It will remove itself when you actually install the CPU. So... Uh, what we will do is just open that in a second, but before I uh, talk about some, uh, after I talk about some coolers and backplates and those kind of things. So this is the uh, the socket backplate. You can see that one's a bit loose because I've had some water cooling gear on here. Uh, should have actually tightened that up. I'll do that quickly now. Completely didn't notice that when I was uh, starting the video, but there we go. So it shouldn't move around too much now. Um, the back plate on these motherboards is actually fixed. So uh, what I thought I'd do is just mention, a, uh, mention that briefly. You can still use coolers that use the standard AMD bracket. That's absolutely fine. But if your cooler or water block uses a non-standard back plate, you will need to source a different one from your manufacturer or consult your manufacturer as to whether it fits or not. So for example, a lot of EK's water blocks use custom back plates and I'm having to wait for a uh, another uh, like an adapter set so I can use all the EK water blocks with my X670 motherboards like this one. So most air coolers are fine though. So anyway, I digress. Let's, so let's crack on with this uh, processor installation. So to start with then, what you want to do is just open the latch. As simple as that. Pulling it out from the notch here and pulling it backwards. You do need quite a bit of force to do that because there's a lot of tension in the uh, in the latch. And then what you want to do is just lift it open like so. And that will stay open. It won't move of its own accord or anything like that. And then in here, you can see all the super, super delicate uh, pins in the processor socket. And we need to try and get this CPU into that socket without damaging it. So the first thing you want to do is to work out which way around it goes. And what you can actually do is look at the, there are notches to the left hand side of the socket you can see one there and one at the top and you can line those up with those on the processor so we've got one there and one there so that's slightly offset to the left so another way of doing it is to simply look at the Ryzen logo um, this time round you are installing the CPU with the Ryzen logo the right way up so it's facing the same way as the motherboard so if that makes sense it's it's in the same orientation as the motherboard as in top to bottom uh going this way down so top being up here and bottom down the other end so that that is another way that you can do it um finally there is also the little gold arrow on the top which you can use because there's a, another arrow over in that top left hand corner so there's three ways that you can easily identify which way to install your ryzen cpu but as per usual those notches in the actual substrate down here um, can only fit into the socket one way but it pays dividends to make sure you know which way round it goes into the socket before you put it in because you do, you do not want to be lifting it in and out of the socket more than you have to 
The next thing to do is not to lift it over at a huge height because if you drop it by accident, it's gonna kill your motherboard by bending the pins. So get the CPU down, get, get a firm grasp of it. I like to kind of hold it either end to end or uh, if I'm coming down, maybe side to side, something like that, but just whatever feels more comfortable. For me, top to bottom, because I feel like I've got a better grasp on it with my hands in this orientation. So all you need to do then is just move the CPU over as low as you can and as slowly as you can, line up those slots like that, it will drop into place. Don't drop it in, just kind of lower it in gently and it should just drop into place like that. Now, if you miss it and you need to remove it again, just grab it again by the same means and just lift it out. See, now even then I'm kind of struggling to do that because it's quite tricky. Um, just grabbing it from those sides. I think this is when it's actually easier to grab it from that side. Yeah, it's much easier to actually grab it from the um, the outer edges and maybe to drop it in as well because you can kind of see a bit better what you're doing. But whatever way round you're doing it, however you want to do it, just make sure you can get a good firm hold of the CPU when you're dropping it in or when you're lifting it out. So that is how to put the CPU into place. And then all we need to do is lift the cap down, the lift the latch down again. There's you can, uh, you can lift the cap off now if you want to, now that the CPU is in there protecting all those pins, but the cap will actually come off of its own accord just like that. So you then push it down and you can pull the cap off. And that way you've not had to go any near, near any of the things or anything like that. And I apologize for all the thermal paste. I think that's actually come from the bottom of the cap and I didn't notice that earlier. <laughs> so um, another thing I will mention about thermal paste and um, just lifting the CPU out, uh, there's been some comments about getting thermal paste in these parts of the processor and that is definitely a thing. Unfortunately, it's not as horrendous as I thought it would be. I've, I've moved this processor between three different motherboards, um, reapplied the thermal paste each time and it's kind of, it has got a bit gooky around the edges, but it's not too bad. What is an issue though, is are these bits down here, as you can see with this latch, it get the latch gets very, very close to these larger sections on either side of the CPU. And if you get thermal paste in there, what actually happens is when you open the latch, it pulls the CPU out with it, which means that the CPU can either just fall out or worse is that the CPU is actually kind of tilted and can actually get, kind of bend inwards um, or swing inwards is probably a better term and damage your pins. So just be really careful when you're taking the CPU out. It's probably worth actually cleaning off all the thermal paste as best you can. So there's nothing to kind of stick to the CPU and have it come out when you open the latch. So that's just something else that you need to be aware, about, uh, aware of when you're removing the CPU. Um, cleaning it, uh, it's kind of best to do a bit of both. Clean all the thermal paste off before you take the CPU cooler and then clean around the socket around here. Uh, that's a very, very good thing to do is to, any thermal paste you don't want to get rid of later, just do it now while the processor is in the socket so you can't damage the pins. You can scrub and do everything, anything else you want on there. It won't damage the pins with the, when the CPU is in the socket. So that's another bit of uh, my two cents there. So that's pretty much it. That's how you install a uh, an AMD socket AM5 processor and what I'll just do quickly now is to remove it. So what we'll do is just remove that, lift it up and like I said earlier, it's probably easier grabbing it from the sides because there's some bigger purchases to get your fingers on. Lift the CPU out. Again, don't lift it all the way up because there's still the chance that you might drop it from a great height. And then what you wanna do as quickly as possible, don't leave your motherboard open like this at all. It's just not worth the risk. I've done it loads of times uh, until the time I managed to drop something into the socket and killed a motherboard, so just don't do it. And then get the cap back on. And again, the cap fits, I believe, in the same orientation um, as everything else, so the logo kind of goes upwards like that. So clip over the top, down, and we're protected. So that is it. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to Crazy Tech Lab and uh, like and comment on this video. And don't forget to check out my other videos as well. Loads more AMD stuff and Intel stuff inbound as well as Nvidia and AMD graphics cards, of course. Loads of other reviews and those kind of gubbins. So thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.